Hi, it's Trevor, and this is Discovering Gay History. Today we're discussing Black, Lesbian, Feminist, Barbara Smith. Here we go. Barbara Smith and her twin were born in 1946. Shortly after her birth, they moved to Ohio to escape the South's Jim Crow laws. Sadly, when Barbara was nine, her mother died, and that's when she moved in with her grandparents in Columbus. Barbara Smith was an excellent student. She took part in desegregation protests and attended speeches of MLK. Barbara went to university in two places, in Ohio and at the new school in New York City. She moved after her freshman year to um, escape racial animosity at, at the school in Ohio. And, but she did move back to Ohio to graduate in 1969. Black nationalism was starting to rise to the surface as part of the civil rights movement, and Barbara was really put off by it because of the sexism and, and sort of the male-dominated drive that the movement had, and she, she was really drawn to the black feminist movement. And in 1973, she attended her first meeting of the National Black Feminist Organization here in New York. So Barbara moved to Boston in 1974 to earn her MA in literature. And also in that year, she established the Boston chapter of the National Black Feminist Organization. She was meeting some resistance and lack of communication from the mother organization in New York of the National Black Feminist Organization. And she was having a hard time dealing with um, their feelings that her chapter was far more politically radical than the mother organization. So she broke off from the National Black Feminist Organization and created her own organization called the Kambahi River Collective. And she led this organization that emphasized the intersections of racial, gender, heterosexist, and class oppression in the lives of African American and other color women. Barbara was also a huge advocate for the LGBTQ movement at that time. She participated in the National March on Washington, the very first march, and she even spoke at the second one to almost a million people. She said that she left the LGBTQ movement when she realized that it was only benefiting and geared towards white gay men. And she felt that um, she was not welcome in the movement, which is a travesty. She is so intelligent and smart. So by 1980, the Kambahis, so the Kambahis membership declined. Uh, they had their last meeting in February of 1980. Through some internal conversations, they were divided on how uh, lesbianism and feminism worked together. Uh, so the, the group disbanded. While studying and through her activism um, to amplify black voices like herself, she discovered that black women's voices especially were not available. So she founded the Kitchen Table Color Press and she was actually encouraged to start this organization from friend and fellow black feminist, Audre Lorde. In 2005, she was elected to the New York Common Council. She was active on issues of youth development, violence prevention, and educational opportunities for the poor, minority, and underserved persons. And she even worked on a, a project called New Yorkers for Alternatives to the Death Penalty. And I just want to leave with this quote from Barbara Smith um, that we really need to think about. Unless we eradicate the systemic oppressions that undermine the lives of the majority of the LGBTQ people, we will never achieve queer liberation. All right. See you tomorrow.